All right, our objective for today, I can summarize data using relative frequency tables. Let's read together. One, two, three. I can summarize data using relative frequency tables. So today we're continuing what we started yesterday. Yesterday we started with frequency tables. Today we're adding one more term to that, and it's relative frequency tables. Okay? So that's why for today we don't need a prior model because we're still with frequency tables. We don't need steps because we have those from yesterday. So we have this prior model already filled. Is that correct? We already have these steps. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, write this down though. Frequency. Even though yesterday I had you circle that part of the definition in the prior model and you pointed to frequency. Let's write it again. Frequency shows how often data occurs. And copy this table. And this shows the frequency of a preferred sport for basketball, 20, football, 32, soccer, 28, and a grand total of 80 frequencies. Okay? So that, this is a one-way uh, relative frequency table. Well, uh, a frequency table. Copy that, please. Copy the term frequency. Shows how often data occurs. And the table. All right, so, so just to recap really quick. So frequency is basically a number as to how often a uh, data occurred. So here, what was the preferred sport? Uh, how many times did people vote for that? 20 for basketball, 32 for football, and 28 for soccer. The grand total is always towards the end. But these are called frequencies. Are we there? Now check this out. I'm going to use the same table. And as soon as I do something else to it, it becomes something different other than frequency. Watch. Look up, please. So I'm going to use the same table. Do you agree that it's the same table? Yes. But now instead of frequency, I'm going to label that re relative frequency. And what does that mean? It says relative frequency is the frequency of the category divided by the uh, total of all frequencies. So let's see. What is the frequency of basketball? 20. And what is the total frequency of all of them? 80. So to find the relative frequency of basketball, I would do this. I would do 20 divided by 80. If I simplify that, that becomes 2 over 8, which is what? 1 fourth. What is that in decimal form? 0.25. And in percent? 25 percent. That's what we call relative frequency. Does that make sense? Yeah. So once again, a frequency is just the amount of times it happens or it's, it, the data happens. But once you make uh, some products or you do some uh, division using the grand total, which was 80, it becomes relative frequency. So therefore, I want you to finish up this table. Look up on the iPad. Once you send it, I want you to copy the definition on your paper, please. Here we go. Finish the rest of the table and send it, please. Yeah, decimal and percent. Yes. All right, so um, we got that table done. Let's go to the next one. Marginal relative frequency. Okay. Look up, please. Pens down. Check this out. Now, now that we finished with one-way tables, now we're in two-way tables. Who notices that? This is a different table, right? So now check this out. A marginal relative frequency is found by dividing the row or column total by the grand total. The row or column total by the grand total. So let's see, what's my column total here? 20. And what is the grand total? So to find the marginal, I do 20 divided by 80, which will be like this. 20 divided by 80. How about this column? 32 divided by 80. 28 divided by 80. How about row total? This one is what? 36 divided by 80 and 44 divided by 80. Now, one way to remember that these are marginal relative frequencies 
The word marginal should remind you when uh, you're writing in language arts and essay, what does a teacher tell you? Leave an indentation or, or a margin, is that correct? Yes. Which means leave an edge. Look at these, aren't these on the edge of the data? So that's how you can remember these are called marginal. So how does that look? Let me show you how that, that looks already with uh, simplified into decimal. There you go. Everybody see that? Yeah. All right. So now these are called marginal because they are here on the edge. But these, look up please, these have a different name. Notice that these are together. What's another word when to say that they are together? Combine or what's the other word? Joint together, is that correct? Those are called joint relative frequency. And how do we find these frequencies? Dividing this one by the grand total. Watch. So what is 6 divided by 80? You write it in a fraction form. 6 over 80 is 0 0.075. 12 divided by 80. 18 divided by 80. 14 divided by 80. 20 divided by 80. And 8, 10 divided by 80. These are called joint relative frequencies. These are called marginal relative frequencies. Copy those definitions, please. I'll give you guys uh, 20 seconds. No, just kidding. 40 seconds. Go. Okay, any question with uh, marginal or joint relative frequencies? Now, who noticed that with this two-way table or frequency table, all the cells, look up please, all of them, all of them, it doesn't matter if they are marginal or joint, all of them were divided by the grand total. Did everybody notice that? Yeah. This one divided by 80, by 80, by 80, by 80, by 80, by 80, all of them by 80. Is that correct? Okay. So that's for marginal and joint relative frequencies. Now this next term, don't write it down, just pay attention first, it's called conditional relative frequency. For this one, we do not divide by the grand total because this one, there's actually a condition that we look for. For example, um, Oliver, if I was to pick one of these uh, categories, which one would you choose? All right, so then he said soccer. So if I pick soccer, I'm going to focus just on this category which makes it now that I'm only focusing on a certain condition of the table. Does that make sense? What is the condition that I'm looking at? Soccer. So to find the relative frequency of just soccer, I'm only going to focus on the total of that column, which is what? 28. So therefore, this conditional relative frequency for girls that play soccer, what do I need to do? 18 divided by what? 28. So therefore, that gives me point sixty four. Are we there so far? So what would I do with boys that play soccer? Ten divided by twenty eight and that should give me point thirty six. Are we there so far? That's what we call conditional relative frequency. But this works for columns, but it also works for rows. So what do I have on my rows? I have girls and boys. So which one should I choose right now? Girls, okay, so I go girls. So if I go girls, same thing's going to happen. Watch. How do I find my conditional relative frequency for this cell of girls playing basketball? What do I do? Divide by 36. So I would do this. I would do 6 divided by 36. Can I simplify this? This is what? 1, 6. And if I divide that, 1 divided by 6 does not fit. It's in there once, that's 6, subtract that 4 out of 0, that's 6, 36, and it looks like it's going to repeat. So this is 0.16 or 16%. And that's for this cell. Is that correct? So what would we do for this one? Divide by what? Divide by 36. How about this one? Divide by 36. So I want you to find me these two conditional relative frequencies. As soon as you find those and you send them, copy the definition, please.
What? What? Okay, so um, I did basketball. You guys did both too. Okay, so make sure you write down the definition. Conditional relative frequency is found by dividing the frequency that is not in the total of the row or the total of the column by the total of the row or column. So um, basically, once again, like I said, you choose a category either by column or by row, and then you start filling in your frequencies according to the total of that row or column. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between conditional and the other two, the, the marginal and joint? Marginal and joint were divided by what? The grand total. The grand, bam, the grand total. And this one is not divided by the grand total. This one's divided by the total of the column or the row. Everybody with me? Okay, since we got this down already, so check this out. What we're going to do next, you're going to fill in this table by yourself. But let me do the first one for you. Check this out. Right now they're asking us to do what? Marginal and joint, which means I'm going to divide each of these by what? 40. The grand total, which is? 40. 40. But there's a mistake in this table. Let's see if you, if you can catch it. Uh, uh, keep it to yourself. Don't say it out loud. Keep it to yourself. Don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. See if you can catch the error. Tell your neighbor. See if they saw the error. Send. And then refresh if it doesn't do. All right. So here we go. So who caught the error? So who saw that it, the boys, it, 4 plus 1 plus 13 is not 8. Is that correct? It should be what? 18. It should be 18. So check this out. This is what I want you to do. You're going to copy this bottom table on your paper. And I want you to fill the entire table so you can identify the marginal and the joint relative frequencies. Okay, so I'm going to do the first one for you. I'm going to do how many girls chose Chinese for foreign language. That one is 2 over 40, is that correct? Which is 1 over 20, which is, let's see, 1 divided by 20 doesn't fit in there. Out of 0 doesn't fit in there. Out of 0 fits in there 5. So this is 0 0.05, which is 5%. Ever see what I did? So guess what you're going to do? You're going to do the rest. And then right now, um, as soon as uh, I'm done with this, well, I'll give you some, some time. But I'm gonna, I want you to do it on your, on your paper, and then I'm going to push the screen to you so you can write it on your iPad and send it to me back to see what you got. Okay? Ready? All right. Here it goes. So... Uh, pretty much, this is what the home play will be about. They're going to ask you questions for marginal and relative, um, marginal and joint relative frequencies, or conditional relative frequencies. So your home play for tonight will be on page, what is it? 423. Have a good one, everyone. There's no tutoring today. Sorry, I have to uh, be out of here. Have a good one. See you guys tomorrow.